I mean, if you've seen Maleficent, you've seen a loom comparative to a human. No, that's a spinning wheel. That's that's pretty much a loom. No, it. That's what they're doing. They're making threads. No, a spinning. No, they're weaving. They're not. They're not making thread. They're. They were fucking. No. Said they were making threads. No, the, a spinning wheel and a loom are two different things. They already have the thread. It's they're putting it on the loom, and then they're weaving the tapestry yeah. of life, and then they're cutting it when they're done. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Welcome all mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast Poseidon, where we explore ancient myths and their modern retellings by reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 2, The Fates. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from Cabin 7, DJ. How's everyone doing today? Cabin 7, if you don't know, is Apollo, and he's pretty great. Today, we are talking about The Fates, but first... I want to show you something that I found. And sorry, listeners, you won't be able to see it, but we'll post a picture on Instagram for you. I was cleaning my whole bedroom yesterday and digging through all my dresser drawers, and I found these. Whoa! Yeah! DJ, do you want to tell them what I'm, what I'm showing you? It's logos for Camp Half-Blood and Camp Jupiter. Yeah! It's pretty sick, actually. And they're not just, like, random stickers. They are actually from the release of Blood of Olympus. That's sick. I didn't. That's awesome. Yeah, I was working at Hastings at the time, and these are freebies we were giving away, and so I stole a bunch of them. <laughs> so I have two, and I will get you one nice. as soon as I see you at some point. Yeah, at some we, point. We're know, still in pandemic. We live like five minutes away from each other, but like. <laughs> it's six months into pandemic. We're getting through it. Yeah, right. Wear your mask. Wash your hands, everybody. But yeah, <laughs> they're cute. We'll post them on Instagram. Again, our Instagram handle, if you don't know, is at Podcast of Poseidon. So you should follow us because we post lots of memes, really. Mostly Percy yeah. Jackson memes. Yeah. So today we are talking about the fates because those are the first kind of mythological thing Percy sees proper aside from his teacher. But she shows up with her sisters later. We're going to do them all three at once. Fates yep. come first. The fates and their sock of an indeterminable size. <laughs> sock of whether it's Bigfoot or Godzilla. Whether it's Bigfoot or Godzilla. They're just big ass socks. So DJ, what do you know about the fates from Greek mythology? I know very little. Honestly, for the longest time, I thought they were just like, there were three of them. So I thought they represented past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. I was not, I was not right on yeah. that. I also thought that until I researched today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found out that they're actually one of them spins the cloth of fate or the line of fate on their loom mm -hmm. another person measures it and then the last person cuts it and i'm like okay that makes sense i also found out that they're in the Arrowverse. did you know that? i did know that actually i didn't I'm... i found that out today i that's super fucking weird but i guess dc does its own thing with gods and shit. i mean hercules has been in the avengers so comic books yeah that's fair yeah. but comic books are <laughs> comic just playing books calvin just with thing. everything but yeah. which we are actually going to talk about the fates in the Arrowverse today <laughs> when we get to the different ways we've retold stories about the fates. Because honestly, that was the one I found most interesting. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, David, you're absolutely right. I also thought that they represented past, present, and future, which I suppose in a way they kind of do. But mm, that's if you stretch it. I think the past, present, and future yeah. often comes from modern retellings of what the fates do. Oh, yeah. For sure, I believe that. But yeah, Davis, you nailed it on the head. The Fates actually are three goddesses, and they each have a name, which I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely just thought they were Fates or the... I figured they had a name. I think it was like the Moirai. The Moirai, yeah. I thought that's just what they were. Yeah, that's fair. I, I guess that's understandable. Mm -hmm. But no, we have Clotho, the spinner, who, as Davis said, is the one that spins the thread of life on the loom. Lachesis, she's the one that actually dictates how someone's life is going to play out. And then there was... Atropos, the inflexible, who uses the abhorrent shears to cut the thread at death. So she's the one that's like, and you're done. Or it could be Isa. Well, Mythology it's by Edith Hamilton, name, but... which is the book that I used to do most of my research onto the ancient myths of the fates, says that says it's, it's Atropos. Atropos. So we're going to listen to Ms. Hamilton. I was on Wikipedia. So. We're going to listen to Ms. <laughs> Hamilton. They are the fates, three goddesses who control the destinies of all beings and are generally acknowledged to be the most powerful 
Because not even Zeus or any of the gods can go against the will of the fates. When they say this will happen, anything even a god does to try to prevent it is just playing into how things will eventually happen the way the fates yeah. decreed. Yeah, the fates are just... They, 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 vibe they vibe with people's lives. Yeah, and so I suppose whether or not what their morality is would honestly be be up to interpretation depending on who's telling the story and who feels that like goddesses weaving out fates for somebody is good or bad i imagine some people might feel that this is very secure their destiny is played out they can do their best they can live their best life but whatever happens was truly meant to be whereas other people might be like what no i control my destiny i control my life like there's no divine power it's very that's a philosophy that's i got a fun mix of the both so. yeah it's like some things are planned out, but what happens in the middle is a fuzzy area. Interesting. You know? Yeah, I personally don't really believe in any kind of like fate or, or destiny. Perhaps I think what we define as like, oh, this is fated. This was meant to be really honestly just feels like the product of our own actions. If you were fated to meet the love of your life, did you work to become the kind of person that the love of your life would want to meet? I mean, yeah. If you get that job, well, did you work hard to present yourself and, like, get through those obstacles? That's not to say that, like, oh, if bad things happen to you, it's because you didn't work hard enough. Like, sometimes things yeah. are completely out of her control. Sometimes she just fucking Yeah, sometimes we're in corrupt systems that aren't really there to take care of everybody. It's a thing. But the Fates, their backstory... I was actually really excited when I was reading about the Fates backstory because there were, like, three major ones just from Greek mythology alone, and two were recorded by the same guy. So, like, right off the bat... There's my whole my whole thesis yeah. for the podcast, which is, hey, if you're retelling these stories in a different way, it's okay because guess what? Even the Greeks were doing it. Was it like Homer? It was Hesiod, I actually. I it was Homer. Uh, okay, I think Homer's got his own story about them. Yeah, so Hesiod was a gentleman who actually kind of first started really recording all of the Greek myths in his Theogony. Initially, when the Fates are introduced, they're described as being daughters of Nyx. But later on, Hesiod describes them as being daughters of Zeus and the Titan Themis, which is really interesting because when they're daughters of Nyx, they're really associated with death and night and the eternal forever. But well, specifically with death. And when they become daughters of like Zeus and the Titanus, they are sisters to peace and the seasons and like all these other goddesses who are kind of goddesses of the inevitable. Like seasons will change kind of those things yeah. so that's super interesting and in orphic cosmology the fate's mother is ananke necessity so even the greeks were remixing their stories in mythology by edith hamilton there are a couple highlight moments of the fates that i found super cool in these early myths the fates don't usually play super active main roles they're not running around like zeus they're not fucking up people's lives like hera they're just kind of we said it, and now we're going to step out. But two of the things that I really liked, one of them was when the fates appeared to Althea, mother of Meliager, to tell her that her son's life was attached to a piece of wood and that he would live until the wood burns up. So specifically what the fates said was, To you, O newborn child, we grant a gift, to live until this wood turns to ash. And so Althea rips that bad boy out of the fireplace and is like, okay, he's good. But later, Meliager kills her brothers in a rage and she throws the wood back in the fire and he dies <laughs> the the greeks were greeks, the greeks. <laughs> hey, hey it's it's the ancient greeks tragedy for all <laughs> you get a tragedy and you get a tragedy and you get two tragedies and your hercules you get seven speaking of hercules he also has a story <laughs> involved. well he's tangentially involved in this particular story it's really mostly about apollo and yeah. Apollo's. But if we talk about the Disney movie, which he's hey. <laughs> constantly involved with the fucking so, face. Yeah, we will talk about the Disney movie. Davis, you're skipping ahead. <laughs> I figured we would, being that's like the biggest piece of fucking media we they're involved in nowadays. Oh, super, yeah. For Apollo specifically, when Apollo was punished by Zeus and sent to live on Earth as a human, he served in the house of Adamantus and Apollo, during that time, heard that the fates had decided, well, Adamantus is going to die pretty soon. And he was like, no, my bro, potentially my lover. Like, Apollo did what he wanted. Apollo and was who he Apollo's wanted. a chad. Yeah. Well, it depends on who's telling the story. I think Apollo's pretty cool. We're going to. Apollo's a chad. This is, this is a tangent. <laughs> so, he heard the fates were about to cut Adamantus' life. He convinced them to let somebody else take his place. And so, Adamantus, who I decided sucks, just. 
thought, what a great deal. And like went around trying to find volunteers and oh, like shit. thought, oh, my dad will definitely take this deal because he's old and he loves me. And his dad was like, no, man, everybody fears death. Even I fear death. I love you, but I'm, I'm not going to willingly just die. I don't, don't want to Like die the fates haven't said you, my life I... is over. Yeah. <laughs> and so eventually, Eclectus, Adamantus' wife, volunteers. Oh my fucking yeah. god. Yeah, <laughs> and he lets her. And so she dies and he lives. But, you know, he feels really, really bad about it. And oh, yeah. he gives her just a grand funeral to make up for it. Okay, so here's where Hercules comes in. He happens to show up right on the day of her funeral. Doesn't know it's her funeral. Adamantus doesn't tell him because he doesn't want to bring the mood down. But when Hercules finds out, he's like, oh, I'm at my bro's house and I'm drinking, but he just buried his wife. I've been such a dick. I'm going to fight death and get her back. And so he does. <laughs> oh my God. And so maybe he goes to the other world to get her. Maybe he just fights death at her tomb. Like... Who knows? <laughs> Maybe he like catches Thanatos while he's like just kind of like walking and chatting with her. He's like, hold on. Bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably that even. And so <laughs> he brings Eclectus back to life, which honestly, I feel like this could be viewed as like, oh, Hercules defying the fates. But Eclectus wasn't the one they said was supposed to die. So really, this is all going according to plan. Yeah, <laughs> the fates are like, yeah, we had a couple of knots and like, interwoven stuff we like we couldn't quite read it ourselves because we nodded it a little too much if you ask me <laughs> but... well, her, her, marrying this asshole husband who would let her die in his place is probably one of those knots <laughs> like fuck you yeah. so the flate the, the flates <laughs> they're the sisters of the fates but they make flan the flates that's dumb i'm flan's cutting pretty it pretty good no the flan's pretty good <laughs> so the fates were strongly tied to death obviously for the ancient greeks because they one of them would cut the, the thread of life. And that connection hasn't disappeared. There's a lot of the fates coming up when death is involved. Uh, in the Percy Jackson book, Grover is specifically freaked out because they cut the thread. Not because they sewed this giant sock. Like, whatever this they had woven, the destiny, what would happen, wasn't super concerning to him as much as the ending. Yeah. I think it's also kind of cool to note that they were not weaving or, or looming anything. They were knitting. They were knitting. They were knitting, which is not the same thing as I understand it. That's just an interesting thing to, to know. I imagine it's easier to carry around knitting needles than it is to like lug that loom around. It's a big, I assume it's big. It's just like, con it's just like constantly like lugging it around and just like setting up camp in front of Camp half and going just like, just like hey, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> just, just doing the whole fucking thread thing and then like. Just staring at camper. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the middle one points and measures. <laughs> just to, like, just a power move, just to remind the, ca the campers to stay in their lane. And just points at fucking Clarice like, and then, like, fucker. brings the... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really know what a loom looks like in real life. I've never seen one. I do have one in Animal Crossing, though. And it's massive. It's bigger than my little outdoor outdoor steam bath, so... The fates in modern media are often very anchored to death. Specifically, if someone cheats death, all the fates or just one of the fates is probably going to show up and be like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, two specific examples are Sabrina the Teenage Witch, where Sabrina saves her friend from falling down an open elevator shaft. How is that cheating? No, death? exactly. I always thought that. Like, one of the, the fates show up and they're like, uh, she was supposed to die. What the hell? And I'm like, her friend's a witch. Like... <laughs> it's not like they died and she revived yeah, her. Yeah, it seems like maybe they wrote the episode and originally Sabrina might have brought her back to life and they're like, that's too dark. That would have been way better. What are you kidding? I, like, that makes way more sense. Yeah, the way they play it in Supernatural makes the most sense to me because in Supernatural, the episode begins and you have just humans going about their life and this woman, we don't know what or who she is, she like freezes time and creates situations where they'll have a horrible accident and they'll just die. And so this just keeps happening and happening. And they're like, what the fuck is going on? You find out that this episode takes place in an alternate timeline in which one of the angels in this ongoing battle, it's very convoluted and cumbersome. Supernatural. Hey, congratulations <laughs> to 15 seasons. Anyway, so one of the angels went back in time and prevented the Titanic from sinking. Oh yeah, thus creating hundreds and thousands of new souls because i guess souls are energy i don't remember it's been a long time since i watched this episode but so this this is one of the fates who was going around being like yeah no these people aren't supposed to exist they're supposed to have died you can't just do that and so that made a lot of sense to me if we're going to use the fates for 
cheating death. Yeah, going back in time to cheat literally death is changing a fate. Story than, yeah, than fucking stopping your friend from falling off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because with the Sabrina one. If you want her to die, you don't let her set up her death to be by her friend who was a witch who could prevent it. That should just be part of your plan. She has a near-death experience. Yeah. DJ, as you already mentioned, for a lot of people, I think, our age or, or really just anybody who casually has seen anything Greek mythology, they've probably seen Disney's Hercules. The fates are very, right. very anchored. To- or if you're just into Disney. Which, if you're just into Disney, which... Yeah. Because that's just a classic Disney movie. It's the first one that Johnny, our brother, saw in theaters. Yeah. yeah. I s- first one that I saw was Monsters Inc. Oh, yeah. We saw that instead of Harry Potter for Thanksgiving, which is fine. We saw Harry Potter opening weekend. It was great. Yeah, there you go. My first Disney <laughs> movie, or even my first movie in theaters was Hunchback of Notre Dame. I still have like nice. a baby memory of just the Notre Dame and that the swooping camera and the bells ringing. Like just that shot is nice. in my brain. So, but in Hercules, the fates are kind of mashed together with the Grey Sisters. Obviously, the fates don't share one eyeball. They're not jumping around like yeah. that. Uh, that is a trait belonging to a completely different set of like three. Uh, three sisters. Yeah, the, the, the Grey Sisters, who they shared one eye and also one tooth. One tooth, which was. Yeah. Don't understand the tooth and get the eye thing. Don't understand the tooth it's, thing. I, the Grey Sisters show up in Sea of Monsters, don't they, DJ? They do, yeah. Like, at the start, because, like, we need to get to Camp Half, but fucking yesterday. And so then they order a taxi of the Grey Sisters, and then they're going, like, 900 miles an hour. We'll the air. talk yeah. all about the Grey Sisters <laughs> when we get to them during our, our Sea of Monsters set of episodes. And we'll figure out what's with the eye and what's with the tooth. They, as in the Fates, kind of get blended with different triple goddess figures a lot in modern media. In another Disney film, The Black Cauldron, they are the original owners of the cauldron, these three witches who are able to like kind of tell the future. Obviously, Disney did not create The Black Cauldron. It was part of the Chronicles of Pyridane, but the characters, these witches, do appear in that book, and they are described as kind of... These three witches, they appear as old crones in the day and beautiful women at night. They also kind of just switch around their identities all willy-nilly. Are like, you're who? I'm I'm that one today. You can be you could be uh Oradu, I'll be Orwin, and that kind of thing. Yeah. But they are actually shown in the books as weaving. And towards the end of the series, they give the hero Terran an unfinished tapestry of his life. Which is Whoa. yeah, which is pretty cool. And Lloyd Alexander, pretty the sweet. author, has stated that. The characters were inspired by the Moray, the Fates of Greeks, the Norn of Scandinavian folklore, who were also basically kind of their version of the Fates, and the Morrigan of Irish mythology, another set of like triple goddess figuring. Another place where the Fates are mashed up are in, I'm very excited to talk about this one, the DC Vertigo's Sandman comic, Spinal Gaiman. Whoa. Which is oh, yeah, uh, right. very near. This one I don't know because... I just haven't read them. No, and they are a lot. Like, oh, goodness me. <laughs> the the Sandman is a lot. Yeah, but it's that. great. And so the, the fates appear. Uh, they are a, depicted with a loom. They're more kind of like the witches in Macbeth. But when Morpheus, or Dream, the protagonist, goes to them to try to find out where his items of power or his, his sigils of power are after he's been imprisoned for like almost 100 years. And they, they tell him... But this is another example of the kind of the the fates being blended with another set of of three figures, because really these the three, as they're often called, they're also called the kindly ones. And they serve as the furies in the story. Specifically, they were very, very fury when they go to destroy Morpheus and the dreaming at the end of the series. Oh, Oh, it's a lot. (laughs) The Sandman is a lot. It's great. It's beautiful. I love it. I hope Netflix does not fuck it up. Uh, during oh, their yeah, adaptation. I remember you telling me that, that they were making an adaptation. Mm-hmm. The, uh, Netflix is... A while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was also announced this week, or the week we're recording, that Netflix is also going to do a Kane Chronicles series. Oh yeah, I saw that. You, you, you sent that one to me too. That's yeah, so we've got, hopefully, Percy Jackson on Disney+, Plus, Kane Chronicles on Netflix. I have a lot of confidence in the Percy Jackson one, to be honest. It sounds like Rick Reardon has a lot of creative control. That one they're doing... A series for, but for the Kane, they're doing feature films, which is going to be weird. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch the movement. I don't, 
have a lot of confidence yeah. in Netflix at this moment after their debacle with Avatar, where they were adamant yeah, about no, yeah, I no that yeah, we gotta have white people in here. What do we do? It's like, it's like no, no, this is an Asian story. It's, yeah, it's from various Asian cultures. Like, what the hell? <sighs> so <laughs> yeah, that was. So anyway, anyway so maybe they'll <laughs> maybe they'll do Sadie and Carter uh, right. I don't have a lot of faith. But yeah. I love love some Egyptian lore. I think last week that I said that Greek mythology Egyptian was Egyptian my... lore is e- Egyptian lore is fucking. It's sorry. so good. I definitely said last week that Egypt uh, Greek lore was my first love. That was a lie. It was actually Egyptian. <laughs> like I do remember Greek was my first, but I think like I've settled on Norse because Norse is just sick. Norse is sick. Norse is sick, and maybe one Norse day we'll is so fucking cool. <laughs> maybe one day we will talk about about Norse lore. I mean, if we continue this podcast, we'll eventually get to Magnus. Hey, and then I'll have to change up the intro. I don't know what we'll call it after this. That's the future Darian's problem. DJ, you already alluded to it, but when I was doing research on different modern versions of modern retellings of the fates, the Arrowverse was honestly the most interesting take. Which is wild. Which is- I mean, like, the Arrowverse is pretty cool. I watched a lot of The Flash. Mm-hmm. I stopped around season three because I'm just like... What, I mean, it was what was on Netflix, and then I just I just haven't bothered to go back to it. And I just don't have the time of day to fucking follow three or four different series. Yeah, it's a lot. Like, that, like I, I love it when series interact with each other, but when they interact with each other in such a way to where I have to watch the other series to get what's going on in this series, I hate mm-hmm. that. That's bad. <laughs> I don't like that. I will hand it to the Arrowverse. They did manage to successfully create what it feels like to try to follow comic books in TV form. So good on them. <laughs> uh, DJ, did you, in your research, do you know how the fates are used in the Arrowverse? Yeah, actually. Tell me about uh, it. I, 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 it was like a little bit, but it was the Clotho, the one who looms it all or weaves it comes out and says, well, people shouldn't, their fate shouldn't be determined. And she destroys the loom and spreads it across the multiverse. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I guess the, the crisis of Earth that like happens, a lot of Earths decide to come together and just like get merged or something. I don't know. It didn't crisis quite of infinite explain Earths. that well. Yeah. It didn't quite explain what happened there. It's like, it's like they, mer- they came together into Earth Prime. And I'm like, does that mean they merged? Or is it just like, you know the united nations like what's going it's on it's very here? comic booky it's very uh, yeah. comic booky and then like well clotho who's i guess it's now charles charlie got uh, charlie got stripped of all her their power is it a girl yes okay got stripped of all her power the other two are now ganging together with an entrepreneur from hell <laughs> to find the loom pieces so that they can get their power back yeah, because they feel like... And it probably continued after that, but then I'm like, oh, I got to get into this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you were researching right 10 minutes before, which I appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's about as much... Re- I did not also have not watched any of the Arrowverse. I did see the very first episode of Arrow, liked it a whole lot, did not have DirecTV or any sort of like cable at the time, did not want to pay for Hulu, yeah. have not seen anything else. Yeah. But yeah, that was really cool because I think... Honestly, I feel like that's a really, really interesting way to use the fates because as we were talking about earlier whether or not you think having goddesses or the divine or any sort of like divinity outlining your life and your destiny as good or bad is highly up to you and your experiences and your personal beliefs so having one of the fates decide no this is bad they should be able to do their own humans or everybody should make their own choices and the other two being like no free will is chaos and that it goes against the natural order things need to be organized and determined I, it sounds like a very, very cool way to do it. I, again, neither of us actually watched it, so uh, we yeah. can't say whether that was <laughs> yeah, a successful storytelling. But hey, if any of our listeners have watched these episodes, I think specifically these were DC's Legends of Tomorrow was where the fates were really playing this big role. And you want to tell us if it was good or bad? Absolutely. Come hang out with us over on Twitter or honestly, probably Instagram. That's where we are the most active. I'll just be honest. We also have a Facebook page. Yeah. Come play with us on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> One more modern interpretation or modern, I suppose, retelling that I want to touch on where the fates appear is the musical Hades Town, which 
That sounds fun. No, it's so cool. There's have you sounds like a blast. Have you heard about I have not. I've never even fucking heard anything about this. That sounds sick. Oh, I'm so <laughs> I'm so glad I get to tell you about it. Okay, so I've heard of Hades Town for a while, and I always thought that the name was just a reference to Hades in Greek, right? Like and uh-huh. that the show was just about whatever. Eventually I did find out. Oh no, it actually is a musical retelling of the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Oh, that's sick. Actually. Yeah. And so you've got, obviously, it, I, and I, I don't want to spoil it because one day I want us to go see it. Eventually, when pandemic is over and we all got our vaccines, we should go see it because it sounds incredible. <laughs> it's it's beautiful The because it's not as if it's set in ancient Greece. It's kind of set in this very like, yeah, I'm looking at pictures. Of yeah, it. yeah, it's kind of looks kind of Great Depression-y. The songs are very like jazz and blues inspired. So it's in the 30s. Yeah, it's, it's very 30s. The underworld in like Hades isn't so much actual death in the underworld. It's like a city where people go, but once you go there, you're in your contract and you can never leave. So that's what happens to Eurydice. Things are really rough and she ultimately decides, I'm just going to... I gotta go. I gotta take my destiny in my own hand. Things are supposed to be better here. I'm gonna go. And Orpheus tries to go and get her back. And it's... Ultimately. Yeah, it's Orpheus and Rissi. That that story can only end one way. And I think that's... That story in particular, if you're gonna retell it, it's such a brilliant reason to bring the fates in as the fates. Because that... I feel like retelling stories could be a lot of fun if you just, like... Even if, like, the fates weren't originally in Mm -hmm. there... You just bring them in there because like, oh, it's trying to change their fate because this is a retelling of the original story, but the original story ended this way. So it's got to end this way. Yeah, actually. So Lindsay Ellis, fabulous YouTuber in her video about the Titanic, she talks about Hades Town and specifically what makes it so appealing and also comparing that to the the Titanic is that you know how this story ends. You know that Orpheus is going to fail to save Eurydice at the last moment you know the titanic is gonna hit that iceberg and sink but even knowing how it ends but getting there is so getting much there <laughs> like because you're getting there and you're watching you're loving this characters and the story and, and the music in hades town and the the romance in in titanic and you know how it's gonna end and just but this part of you like maybe this time it won't maybe this time maybe this time the titanic doesn't hit the iceberg maybe this time orpheus doesn't look back but no it will end the same way every every time because that is fate and so I think having the fates be yeah. there for Hades Town is such a smart idea because it could have been the muses, right? Singing and stuff like we saw in Hercules. It could have been the Furies who are actually in the, uh, the underworld, yeah, I believe. Yeah, Orpheus' yeah. singing moves them to tears, so they could have been there. But no, it's the fates because this is exactly what they're for. I think in storytelling, I believe this is what makes the fates so relevant today to keep talking about because yeah having them show up and antagonize sabrina the teenage witch is is funny and having them battle each other out over free will in dc's legend of tomorrow is really cool but talking about the inevitability of it all whether you believe in fate or destiny there are some things in life when you look back and you're like there is no way i can change it now and when you think about those memories again you'll wish and hope that like but maybe i'll be different this time and it it Mm -hmm. can't it's just that's what happened that's fate. that's that's fate that's permanence and once it's over it's over and that's kind of the way we're living life is that every moment is gone and what we did then we can never change so all we can do is look ahead and try to figure out how can i look yeah. back on tomorrow and not curse the fates Regret. but smile at what happened to me if that's in our control yeah that was a weird kind of tangent, but <laughs> Hades Town specifically, I thought was really cool because the the actresses who played the Fates actually decided which of the three Fates they were going to be, and so they really matched it to their singing style and what they were interested in. the The actresses are Jewel Blackman, Yvette Gonzalez Nancer, Nacer, and Kay Trinidad, and they're stellar and they're gorgeous singers and they're amazing performers, and so. Mm-hmm. One thing I really like, I read this article from 
Long Island Weekly from last November, November 2019, where they discuss, these actresses discuss like the role and their approach to doing the fates. But what I really liked is that the way Gonzalez Nacer describes it, she says, in this interpretation, we sometimes take on the role of the wind and push people one way or another, literally and figuratively, so they can fulfill their predetermined fate. And that's something you can really see in the song. When the chips are down, the fates are singing at Eurydice to try to make her make a decision. And that song can come off as very antagonistic, antagonistic where they're trying to force her to do something or like goad her into it but the way the one of the other actors trinidad describes it as one of the biggest things i thought about while we were learning this number this number being when the chips are down was that we shouldn't be seeing her as our victim we are her cheerleaders we're just nudging just cheering her to continue to make the decision that we know she's going to make i think that's a really cool way of yeah, like yeah having the fates be yes but yeah, one day, DJ, we will go see Hades Town. I'm so excited. It'll be super fun. And we'll certainly probably do a, a bonus episode. One of our, our what I'm calling our remith episodes. We yeah, discussed our yeah. remith episodes. Thank you. I was nice. very proud of it. Yeah, those are the stories of the fates. And there's obviously so many, many more. The fates are so powerful. Fates have been prevalent for hundreds of years. Yeah, they've been around for, for almost thousands. Yeah, thousands of centuries. And obviously various cultures have also had their own kinds of interpretations of the fates. And so sometimes you're not using the Greek fates. You might be using, say, in the comic book Wicked and Divine, where you have a bunch of interpretations of these godly characters. The fate character is the Norn from, from Scandinavia. And so that's really cool. But we'll put a pin in that and circle back to Wicked and Divine, I'm sure, in the future. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> DJ, of these stories, or maybe of the ones you know that we didn't discuss, do you have any favorite modern interpretations of the fates? Honestly, I think it's just Hercules because that one's the most prevalent in my mind. Really? The most nostalgic. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, thinking about it, I don't see the fates all too often in media, but maybe that's just what I'm watching or maybe it's just I'm not looking, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's Hercules is like, haha, the fates are in your face. And they were always, they were just a good time yeah. to watch them fucking bicker and banter. Like, I know that's, that was the, what were they called? The Ray Sisters? Gray Sisters. The Gray Sisters. I know that was mostly the Gray Sisters bicker banner that they were playing off of, but it was still fun. Yeah, it is really fun. So what do you think the fates would look like today if you were going to do a modern telling? Let's what, make our own fates. What I fates. think they look like? Yeah. Obviously, they need to be creating the fate and destiny on something. Looms and weaving isn't super prevalent now. And honestly, in a lot of retellings, you don't often see their loom. Even in Percy Jackson, as we said, they're knitting. So how do you think the fates would be? On a typewriter. On a... <laughs> They're just writing the guy's life. And when the person's like writing, when the, the second thinks they're done, they just grab it, hand it to the next person, and she puts a period on it. Oh, I actually, <laughs> I was kind of like, really? Typewriter is your modern? But I do like that visual of like, doo -doo -doo, and someone just rips and hands and then dot. I do like yep. that. <laughs> Okay, well, now I'm kind of embarrassed to share mine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I want it to be modern. I was thinking, I mean, I was thinking of a writing kind of style, mm -hmm. but I'm like, what are they going to do? Just fucking share a Google Doc? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to collaborate. Like, like, well, like, yeah, they're modern, but maybe they're stuck in their time, you know? So here's a fucking typewriter. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mine was, and again, I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to share it anyway because you shared yours, was, well, what if they're creating an Instagram feed? <laughs> for like everyone they're going yeah, for. Yeah, and so here's, it's like, someone's like, here are the photos and they're putting the captions and here are the keywords and it's going and going and the one who's- And like, then the last picture's just sisters. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I really like your your interpretation of like it being a typewriter. It's like, oh yeah, they're, it's modern, but they're still stuck in their time because that feels very Laura Olympus to me. When we smash cut and mm -hmm. actually see the fates- and they're, yeah, they're like they've got like VHSs, yeah, VHSs and shit, and that's great. I think that's a lot of fun. And yeah, I just like the idea of someone fucking ripping it out. Like this is when he dies. <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> well, I think Fates on a typewriter is is a great idea because as a writer myself, you definitely do get the vibe <laughs> of I'm controlling destiny of these characters, and will you know joy or will you know pain? It's and I could just like imagine somebody like running down the hall and like say like these this interpretation of fates is like and you just hear a typewriter tick tack and, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> and then you just like like and it like a killer's chasing them, you know? And then like oh, dude. they get cornered and then you hear a rip. 
Oh. And then you hear it fucking like right as the stab, you like see a pen just die. I wasn't even thinking about the sound aesthetic of that. That's so good. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, we'll we'll work on getting that that short film in production. So we're on Patreon. That'll be our one thousand patron goal, Davis. And then it like, and then it like once that dot hits, it like just like it's suddenly just a fucking printer press, and the guy's like, "Here's my story." <laughs> That's very good. Wait, okay, hold on. So, is the person out of the period using a quill? Probably. I mean, a quill is like, <laughs> like, let's be real here. Quill or a fountain pen? Fountain pen. Fountain pen's probably good. You get that, like, ink dribble. So it looks like Yeah, the- like a just a tiny dribble of ink, and it's just like, <laughs> But I mean, a quill would also just be, like, a little extra. Because, like, let's be real here. They're stuck in their time. They're like, very stuck in their time. I like that typewriters do, in fact, have periods on them. But no, the final period <laughs> is the quill. <laughs> because it wouldn't look like the rest like, of the period. They got period. a ton of periods, but it's got like, the it's end got a period is, and, like a little dribble. Yeah, yeah. because the, the period made by a quill or a fountain pen would look very, very different than the period made by the typewriter. And the end of your life is very, very different than the end of any other sentence or chapter. That's very good. I don't think it's going to get any better than that. DJ! <laughs> the Fates! The Fates! Do you have any other thoughts on the Fates before before we say goodbye to our wonderful listeners? I don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, the Fates have decreed that this is the end of the episode. Clearly. Clearly. I'm not sorry about that joke at all. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, again for listening. We had a wonderful time. If, if you liked what you heard... Please do us a favor and share this episode with your friends. Maybe share it with a friend who always says, well, things will work out the way they're meant to whenever anything happens ever. And just start a dialogue about whether or not they believe that ancient Greek goddesses are are weaving their destiny. You guys have a great day. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. Until then, don't be like Zeus. (laughs) Don't be like Zeus. Podcast of Poseidon is created, produced, and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hayne. Our cover art is by Audrey Miller. Find them on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell. Come hang out with us on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast of Poseidon. Find all of our episodes and episodes transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>